Hey, this is Rick Bigger. I'm going to run you guys through chart method documentation training. Let's get rolling here. So our goals for this training here are to explain the chart method documentation, how it works for people not familiar with it, and then we're going to go through the common call templates, how to find them, how to use them. So chart method, most of us are familiar with this. A lot of people already use chart method. Uh, this is mainly for people who are not. Um, if you're not familiar with it, chart is an acronym. Uh, it stands for, the C is for chief complaint. The H is history of present illness. A is assessments. R is treatments. T is transport. And then you have an S for special information. Uh, you've probably seen this. You may have also saw, have, have also seen D charts in the past with dispatch included on the, on the beginning. Uh, we are going to focus on the chart part of this, and they have the S for special information. So chief complaint, it's abbreviated as a capital C slash capital C. It should include the age, sex, and main complaint. So it's pretty straightforward, 37-year-old male with chest pain. Um, the one question most people have is what if they have multiple complaints or what if they told me something that I found something else? Um, if it, I'm always going to pick the main or the most serious of the complaints and list that. Uh, that will change sometimes, such as leg pain from a fall or leg pain secondary from a fall or chest pain secondary to an MVC. Um, but just use your main complaint as the complaint. Next is your history. History is abbreviated with a capital H and a lowercase x. It should include the history of the present illness. It can also include relevant past medical history and medications, allergies. Uh, basically, this tells a story of what happened and is often all that doctors and nurses will read. Some people stop when they arrive. Some include until patient care is discontinued. Both ways are correct. Okay, so what, the, what I'm talking about there, um, if you've ever printed out a PCR or read one from a QA standpoint, a computer, you're going to scroll through about 15 to 20 pages before you find what you're looking for. Um, when you print these out, the narrative prints first, so it makes this easier. When you pull this up from the back side, you can get the narrative uh, when they pull this up at the, at the hospital. Okay, so that's generally what they're looking for and what they're going to read. They don't want to dig through page after page after page of state required data, billing stuff. They're really looking for this narrative so they can read about the care that happened and find out what went on and, and what the history was they were we were told. Um, so the way that some people were taught to do this is the history of present illness is from the event when it started until you arrive on scene, and then that, that's the history, and then everything after that is treatment. Um, a, a tip that I was given um, in some documentation classes and things really helped me is include everything, the history of present illness for the doctor is to include everything that from the event until you get to the doctor and you turn patient care over. Okay, so just like you would give during a verbal report, the written report should be the same way. And what this does is put all that information in one place and makes it much easier for them to read and find out the complete story without having to dig through your narrative, go through all the assessment, read through dozens of pertinent negatives to get to the, the second half of the story. But both are correct. If you've documented the other way and you prefer that, that is not wrong, and you can continue to do that. It's just a way that's really helped me. Next, your A is assessment. It's abbreviated with a capital A and a lowercase x. But this should include an initial assessment. So just like in school, when I walk up, I see the patient, where were they found, and then I go through their mental state, and then ABCs. And then a complete head-to-toe assessment in detail. And I'll show you guys a quick little chart that's helped me make that uh, easier to look at and easier to read through. The next is your treatment. Okay, this, this is your R. This is abbreviated with a capital R and a lowercase x. So this must include all treatments given during the event, even prior to arrival. It's something that we get into mostly with transfers. Um, if, if they start an IV... They gave aspirin nitro before you arrived, especially if they did something that you're monitoring, such as an IV or a pump that's being monitored. Make sure that that is documented so that the, <coughs> excuse me, 
so that the next level of care has a complete story of what happened. Generally, this written in chronological order. Um, this especially becomes important on cardiac arrest calls or serious medical calls where there's lots of treatments. You don't want to just randomly list things or, or ramble through a story of what happened. Make sure that things go in chronological order so that it makes sense. At minimum, it will always include assessment and vitals. So every patient gets an assessment and every patient has their vitals taken. If they didn't receive those, then it should be documented to why, uh, such as they refused or it was impossible to reach them or whatever the case is. Generally, it's going to be because they refused. Make sure that that has to be documented. Um, next, some medics like to write a story. Some like to list. Both are correct. Just like we talked about in history, if you uh, like to stop at when you arrived and then make everything else in the treatment section, there's nothing wrong with that and you're going to break it into two segments, completely fine. Um, if you like to tell the whole story in the history, uh, that's the way I prefer to do it, I then just list left to right in chronological order everything that happened, and that puts, uh, puts all the, the care in one box, easy to read, and then you can go down and get a detailed list left to right in the treatment section. But both are correct. Last is the transport. That's our T, capital T, lowercase x. The things this must include, hospital destination, belongings that were transported, and the state the patient was left. Um, you, you don't see everyone include whether or not they transported belongings, and then the, station, the, state, was patient, the state the patient was left in. Uh, these are very important. So try to always include either no belongings transported, and then the patient was left a and to 4, GCS of 15 under the care of staff or some type of statement like that um, in case there is something that is brought up with things being lost or where things were located. This information can help us find that person's belongings or um, this could be uh, this could be uh, less than know that we didn't take anything from their house. They left that at home. Next is not degeneric statements such as straps times four. Not putting straps on the patient is negligence. Um, it doesn't mean this is wrong, but it's not required. Um, so I went to a documentation class a couple of years ago, and this, this uh, was something that really stood out to me was that writing generic statements such as straps times four. Um, three, um, three so these, this is a medical document. It is the assumption that you always put the straps on the patient. If you don't, you're being negligent and breaking the law. So um, that's not something that needs to be included in the medical report for the doctor. Okay. Also, generic statements like that, depending on what kind of cot you're using, okay, so straps times four is something I read a lot. Uh, we don't have any cots at a Wasso fire that have four straps. Okay, so they, they have three that are required by the state, and then they have the other two. So it should, if you were going to put that, it would be straps times three or straps times five. But I see straps times four all the time um, in calls when I do QA. So be careful with generic statements because they can put you in a bind later. Um, if you wrote straps times four in a striker cot and then had an accident, you showed that you didn't do it correctly. And we know that, that that's just a... Uh, it's just something that you're, you miswrote because you've wrote it so many times. So try to avoid those generic statements like that. So last is special. That's the S. Um, anything that doesn't have a place, such as contact numbers, last seen normal times, medical record numbers, etc. this is a good place to put those. Um, this is new for some people. They've never used this on the end. Um, this is a great little place if you, you just, like I said, you don't have a place where it's going anywhere else, but... But you feel it's pertinent for the report, whether it be for patient care, um, adult protective services things, CPS things, contact with the police, um, something that happened on scenes that, that needs to be included, this is a good place for it. One thing to be careful about on this section is remember this is a, um, a medical record that can be subpoenaed, so make sure you don't use bias in here. Just make statements about what you saw. Don't make assumptions or judgments in this section, because this can be used against you later if you do. But this is a great thing to document things that are going on that don't necessarily have a place in the medical call or have directly to do with the medical care. 
So let's run through an example really quick. The thing I want you to remember about these examples, I made several of these templates for common calls. I have a chest pain, non-emergent medical, non-emergent trauma, emergent trauma. I'm going to continue to make some more of these to, to help people that are newer to documentation or they're new to chart method. Um, this is not the way you have to do it. This just gives you an idea of things I've done in the past personally that um, have been um, that have worked for me to help you guys out. If you want to change it from this, you're not required to use this exact template. You're just required to use the structure of charts. So um, if you have any questions about these, contact me and I can help you out. But hopefully this will give you just a general idea of how to do this. So from the top, we have Chief's Complaint, 37-year-old male, chest pain. Just a standard statement. I don't need to be incredibly detailed. And uh, often when people try to get so detailed and use lots of medical terminology, they mess it up or they misplace it. Um, and, the, and some of that is very difficult to read. So just a standard plain text, just like you're talking on the radio, just like you're giving a verbal report. Your written report should try to be just like a verbal report, a conversation um, to another human that's going to read this and so he can get the point across. Next is history. Um, use this section to describe the present illness from the time you arrive until you turn over patient care. This is generally the only part of the report the doctor reads. So as I said before, you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You can split them if you would like. Next, your assessment. So this is the initial assessment. The patient was found sitting in a chair. The patient was awake, talking, breathing normally, and had a strong radial pulse. Okay, just tells, it covers my mentation and my ABCs very quickly. So then the complete assessment, this is the acronyms here or the abbreviations, acronyms and abbreviations to get you through that assessment quickly, makes it thorough and easy to read. This is where you can include as many pertinent negatives as you would like, get as detailed as you would like, depending on the call. So a standard statement I like to use is no complaints and denies pain. So you're gonna see under H-E-E-N-T -E -E for head, eyes, ears, nose, throat, um, you'll get no complaints, denies pain. So the patient didn't tell me anything, and then I asked, they denied they were in any pain. Um, and then pearl for pupils equal reactive. Pupils equal round and reactive to light, right? So that's kind of a standard for head, eyes, ears, nose, throat. On a chest pain call, that's about all I need. I can be more detailed as I want, but that's kind of your baseline. Next is your chest. So they report left-sided chest pain, describe the pain as pressure, rated the pain as 6 out of 10, Denies any change to the pain with breathing or palpation. Lung sounds are clear, equal chest rise and fall. You can change that wording and other things up, but that's just a general way to do it. The abdomen, again, no complaints, denies pain, denies abdominal pain and nausea, vomit, diarrhea. So I doubled that up there. You could get rid of the denies pain. Um, you don't have to repeat that twice. But that's just a general statement for the abdomen. Because this is a chest pain call, obviously on a trauma call or an abdominal pain call, There'd be more in there. Pelvis, again, no complaints, denies pain. The kind of a good little blanket statement for the pelvis on a non -trauma, trauma call, patient was able to stand and pivot without assistance. And the general statement that the pelvis is stable. Extremities, because this is a chest pain, reports pain and numbness in the left arm, radiating from the chest, denies pain in any other limbs. And you can obviously include more than that if you would like. Back, no complaints, and eyes back pain, mental slash neuro. Okay, so standard baseline, ANO times 4, GCS of 15. A uh, thing to remember here is if that does not say ANO to 4, GCS of 15, there needs to be a qualifier, such as mentation is reported as normal by family or by staff, or medical, medical record shows history of dementia. Um, also, on medical calls where you sedated somebody, if I created a situation where the patient isn't GCS 15, document that. Patient GCS, GCS was reduced by sedation or pa this patient was sedated. You don't have to get too complicated, just plain talk, qualify the statement of why their GCS wasn't 15. So moving down there next is your treatment section. Uh, so you got your RX, so on a chest pain call, or on any call, we're gonna have assessment vitals. That's our bare minimum. Everybody gets an assessment, everybody gets vitals. Um, next we have four lead, 12 lead, nasal capno, 324 milligrams aspirin, 18 gauge IV, left AC, 0.4 nitro spray, 
dot, dot, dot. We can go on and on and include. If you like to list, that's how I do it. Left to right, chronological order. This is how it happened. This is all my stuff. You can be detailed and put in your dosages and your sizes of IVs, or you can leave those out and include those on the interventions tab. Me personally, I like to put it all here because it gives me one complete um, place where the doctors and nurses have to look. If you like to write in a split fashion where you stop on your history and you like to write a story, that's perfectly fine too. I just didn't include it in the template because that's not how I do it. Next, we have our transports. You'll see patient was transported to Bay the Medical Center. Uh, verbal report given via radio and at bedside. Uh, that's a statement that you don't always have to include here at Owasso. We don't have really a problem with, uh, we have a good relationship with our hospitals, with some services. They like to see that, so it's something I've continued to do. Next is something you should always do. No belongings transported for the patient, or if you transported them, include that, that you transport a belongings bag and where you left it or you left it with the nurse, etc. And then patient was last seen a of 4 GCS of 15. Uh, make sure you always qualify the state the patient was left in when I last saw them. And then we, once again, we have our special on the end. Anything that doesn't have a place but it's important, that's where it goes. So if hopefully this uh, training helped you guys and this explains the chart method and kind of what we're looking for, the goal of this switch is to get better standardized documentation so it's easier to do QA and get us all documenting better. It's better to paint, we want to paint a better picture for the hospital and make sure that we're turning over good documentation and good patient care to the next person. And it's, if you haven't had a lot of experience in documentation, need help, please reach out to one of your shift reps. If you're not familiar with who they are on A shift, it's Teal and Burke. B shift is Bradshaw and myself. C shift is Adamic and Nicholson. So if you ever need help, reach out to one of those guys. Uh, reach out to your captain, they can help you. Um, if you have any particular problems with this training or something you don't understand, call me directly at any time and I'll help you out. Hopefully you got something from this and hopefully this helps you with your documentation. Thanks for listening and I will talk to you guys soon.